So how is glaucoma diagnosed? And how do you test for glaucoma? Well, by the end of this video, you'll know all of those answers and you'll know what to expect at the time of your next exam. So let's take a look. Hey everybody, welcome to Dr. Eye Health. I am Dr. Joseph Allen, and I'm here to help you learn all about the eyes, vision, and vision products. So if you're new here to the channel, consider subscribing. Also, at any point throughout the video, check out the show notes and links below for further information about anything that we mentioned today. Also to note that this video is part of a complete video series on glaucoma, so if you're new here, that's great, but don't miss out on all the other good videos and content about glaucoma. And to find that playlist, I've included a link down in the description below. So now there's many different things that an eye doctor will consider and think about before diagnosing somebody with glaucoma. The first thing that everyone starts to think about when you hear glaucoma is high elevated eye pressures. And yes, that is true. So when you go to an eye doctor, whether it be something for like pink eye uh, or something just like a routine eye exam, the doctor's gonna check your eye pressures. Now, when we check your eye pressures, there's a couple different ways to do this, but the most famous way is probably with the non-contact tonometer. That's that one with the air puff you know, the air puff test, the one that everybody hates and probably has PTSD from. Now, this instrument blows a puff of air at the eye and measures the response time of the cornea and they can tell basically kind of what the eye pressure is. But again, nobody liked it. Uh, they actually originally made that instrument to replace a different test, which we use a little blue light and a plastic little probe that actually comes close to your eye and measures your eye pressures. That instrument is called a Goldman tonometer and is really the gold standard for all glaucoma testing. And so if you do have a diagnosis of glaucoma, there's a good chance you're gonna see the blue tipped Goldman tonometer test. The other one that I really like, especially for just screening and testing and a routine exam is one called an eye care. I have no financial interest in any of these instruments or the companies that make them, but the eye care is a newer instrument uh, that's very gentle toward the eyes. It basically has a rounded plastic little probe that reaches out and just barely touches the eye. But it's so quick and so gentle that you really don't feel it. It kind of tickles your eyelashes if you blink halfway through, but it only takes a few seconds, doesn't require eye drops or anything like that. I love it. Now, eye pressure is usually considered normal when it's between a mark of 10 to 21 millimeters of mercury. However, it does vary from person to person. So a lot of times, if you do have a diagnosis of glaucoma, your doctor's gonna say, oh, the pressures are good, they're bad. I'd say, be sure to ask them what exactly the pressures are, and you yourself can even make a note and kind of track your pressures over time. Now, as an eye doctor, certainly eye pressure is important, but it's certainly not the most important when it comes to diagnosing glaucoma because there are some types of glaucoma with normal eye pressures. Now, what's really important is for the doctor to evaluate the health of the optic nerve in the back of the eye. And to evaluate the optic nerve the best, the doctor needs a dilated view of that optic nerve. So I do recommend dilated eye exams for my patients for that reason. Now, when a doctor looks at the optic nerve and says, yeah, this could be glaucoma, the doctor oftentimes will take a photograph of the optic nerve so that they can use it as a future reference to measure and find if that, that nerve is changing. Beyond just taking photographs of the nerve, they may also use an instrument called an OCT, which stands for Optical Coherence Tomography. That instrument, the OCT, is Excellent because it actually uses infrared light to give basically like a map of the optic nerve or the retina inside the back of the eye. And this actually is kind of like getting a really high definition ultrasound of the eye. And it actually will measure out the thickness or pretty much quantify the amount of individual nerves that are entering in the eye through the optic nerve. So this is an excellent way for the doctor to get kind of a snapshot of the health of the optic nerve as well as using those numbers and that map to follow the progression and how the optic nerve is functioning over time. Both photographs of the nerve in the back of the eye and the OCT may be used usually once per year. The other instrument you're most likely gonna see at any doctor's office for glaucoma is something called an automated visual field analyzer. And this instrument is 
is really important because again, glaucoma can cause loss of somebody's peripheral side vision. So this instrument will help actually map out if any visual or functional vision loss has occurred. Uh, and again, this is important, not just so the doctor knows what your vision is like, but they can use this to help stage the severity of the disease and monitor for progression. Now, the downside is that this instrument and this test is probably the worst, most frustrating test in all eye care. For as useful as it is, it is very frustrating to do as a patient. It can become a long test. Actually, the worse you do, longer the test takes. Uh, you usually test one eye at a time, and again, it measures your side vision by flashing little bright lights off to your side, uh, all while you're looking straight ahead at a single fixation target, usually kind of a dim yellow light. And while the instrument flashes these bright lights off to your sides, these lights are varied by intensity and location, and when you see the light, you click a button, and the instrument records that answer, and then it gives off a printout sheet for the doctor to evaluate. Now, what stinks again is that this test, uh, you have to have a really good focus, you have to kind of try to sit still. If you start moving around, if you become uncomfortable or tired, or maybe your eye starts to tear from dryness, it can be really frustrating. And even for the doctor, a lot of the times we'll get the results and we're like, ah, oh, this isn't a really good test. Uh, then we end up having to repeat it again and again. Now, again, this vision, this test is frustrating it is, as it is, is honestly one of the most useful tests for glaucoma. It's pretty standard. And when this test, uh, in, you know, you think, oh, this test really stinks. I wish I only had to do it once. No, a lot of the times we end up having to repeat this test several times throughout the year. Now, I know it's, it kind of stinks. It's not the most fun. It's basically the most boring video game ever made. However, uh, I do think that if you're taking this test, you want to take it seriously. You want to try to be comfortable uh, and pay attention the whole time because the better the better you do on that test the better results the doctor gets hopefully uh, they'll be able to take better care of your glaucoma and maybe you won't need to repeat it as often now the other two tests that you'll most commonly see for glaucoma in any eye clinic one is called pachymetry and that's where we use an instrument that comes really close to the eye after we numb it with some numbing medication uh, the instrument touches the eye and measures the thickness of the cornea that's that front window structure on the front part of the eye because several studies have confirmed that uh, a thinner cornea on the front part of the eye versus average uh, is more associated with a higher risk of developing glaucoma and having damage from glaucoma, where a thicker cornea is more correlated with a, kind of a more protective effect and a lower risk of glaucoma. Then there's an instrument called a, using what's called gonioscopy. Now, this procedure, we use a, a little mirror that's pretty much a specialized contact lens. And again, we'll numb the eye and we'll actually place this special contact lens on the eye and we'll look through it. It has these little mirrors built in so that the doctor can actually look into the mirror and observe the drainage structure of the eye. We're gonna look for if there's any sort of proteins or maybe pigments stuck in the eye, or it helps us evaluate for something like angle closure glaucoma, uh, if a person's at risk for that. So actually we have covered most of the different tests that are used in the diagnosis of glaucoma. However, there are a couple others that uh, we don't see quite as often or haven't become quite standard in the diagnosis or the management of glaucoma. And one of those is called corneal hysteresis. That instrument is very similar to the pachymetry one that we just mentioned, uh, but instead of measuring the thickness of the cornea, it measures the stiffness or how well it bounces back. And there's studies that correlate the those results to how well somebody actually has a risk, uh, how high of a risk somebody is for glaucoma, as well as how somebody responds to medications. There's also an instrument that I really like, uh, which is called electrodiagnostic testing, uh, either a VEP, uh, a visually evoked potential, and then there's ERGs, an electroretinogram. Uh, these have been around for quite some time, but they've never really quite been made so available to just regular 
or eye clinics. Mostly they've been in academic settings. Uh, but in the last maybe 10 years or so, uh, a new brand called Diopsis, I have no financial interest in this company, but they made uh, an instrument that makes it a lot easier to run these type of tests and so they are becoming more available. Uh, I actually did some research using this instrument when I was a student uh, in getting my doctorate. But what's great is that there are there is evidence saying that with electrodiagnostic testing, uh, you can actually detect glaucoma before vision loss occurs almost by up to seven years. So it's an excellent instrument if you can find a clinic that has one. Uh, the downside is that it is a little bit finicky. You have to know how to set it up. You have to know how the test is run and the doctor has to know how to evaluate the results. And so yeah, that's another test that can be repeated multiple times. But otherwise, yeah, those are really the most types of testing you'll see for glaucoma. So eye health question of the day, which type of tests have you seen already? Is there any that you really like or really hate? Go ahead and connect with us in the comment section below. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to remember that this video is part of a complete series all about glaucoma, so make sure to check out the link to that. I'll hook it up here in the YouTube card as well as in the description below. Otherwise, again, this is Dr. Joseph Allen here from Dr. Eye Health, bringing you the best tips and education about the eyes and vision. If you would like to check out other cool videos from Dr. Eye Health, just click or tap the screen just up here or click or tap the screen just down here. Otherwise, keep an eye on it. We'll talk to you soon. Coherence tomography, op, optical to, uh, optical cohere. Wow. Okay. Say that three times fast. Optical coherence tomography. Optical coherence tomography. Optical coherence tomography.